Dungeon Roll is a push-your-luck dice game with a dungeon-crawling feel from designer Chris Darden and Tasty Minstrel Games. In Dungeon Roll, players are the heads of adventuring parties trying to get as far into a deadly dungeon as they can. It supports from one to four players and lasts half an hour or less. Players start Dungeon Roll by taking a hero card and a player aid. Everything except the treasure tokens are placed out on the table. The treasure tokens stay in the box. The hero cards are placed novice side up and the game begins. So on their turn, a player attempts a dungeon delve and they start by rolling the seven white party dice. The player to their left is going to become the dungeon lord. They set the 10 sided level die to one and then they roll one of the black dungeon dice. Now, any dragon results rolled are immediately set aside into the dragon's lair area. The level die determines which level of the dungeon the adventurers are on. Now, each level has four phases, monster, loot, dragon, and regroup. During the monster phase, the player tries to defeat all of the monsters at that level with their active companion dice. So the fighter, cleric, and mage will defeat any number of monsters of their matching color, or one of any other type of monster. The champion defeats three monsters of the same color or one of any type, and the thief will defeat one of any monster. Now, as soon as a companion has been used to fight monsters, their die is moved to the graveyard and is considered inactive. During this phase, you can also use a scroll to reroll any number of dungeon and companion dice. Your hero also has a special ability which can be used at will. They also have an ultimate ability which they can use once per delve. Now, if you fail to defeat all of the monsters at a particular level, then your delve immediately ends and you don't get any experience points. In the loot phase, you can use a thief or champion to open any number of chests. And for each chest that you open, you get to take one treasure token from the box. Now, treasure tokens are each going to have some kind of special ability that'll help you during the game. So, for example, uh, there's one that matches each of the companion die results, except for the champion, and they can be used in the same way. There are others that might let you fight or avoid the dragon, and others that let you escape the dungeon entirely. You can also use one party die of any type to quaff as many potions as you have. Now, a potion will let you take one of your companion dice, which is in the graveyard, and put it back in your party, and you can choose the die face. Next is the dragon phase. If there are three or more dice in the dragon's lair, then the dragon shows up and you have to defeat it by using three different companions. If you defeat the dragon, then all the dice from the dragon's lair are removed, and you get one experience point and one treasure token. If the dragon defeats you, then the delve ends immediately. And if there are less than three dice in the dragon's lair, then nothing happens during the dragon phase. In the final regroup phase, the adventurer decides whether they're going to end the delve and retire to the tavern, which means they collect experience points equal to the level of the dungeon that they just finished. Now, if this brings their total experience points up to five or more, then they level up, which means they turn their hero card over to the master side and they get access to different special abilities. Now, if you decide to go on, the level die is turned to the next level and the dungeon lord rolls a number of dungeon dice equal to the level to repopulate the dungeon. Now, the adventurer has the same number of active dice that they had at the end of the last level and any dice that are in the graveyard remain there. The game continues until every player has attempted three delves. Then any unused treasure is cashed in for one experience point each, plus you get any special bonuses from those, and the player who has the most experience points is the winner. So I was really pleasantly surprised by Dungeon Roll. Uh, it fits very much into the same genre as like zombie dice and Martian dice and those really fast, really light push your luck games uh, that I often find don't have enough going on in them to hold my interest beyond trying them just the once. With Dungeon Roll, that wasn't the case. Um, I actually ended up playing this solo, which I would never do with any of the other games, and played it like over and over for about an hour because you can really get competitive with 
yourself or with other players. Um, there's enough there in terms of decision making and variety in the different hero cards that there is replayability. It does actually feel a little bit different every time. Um, and I was also pleased with the number of decisions that you have to make. This is, this is really not a complex strategy game. Don't go in expecting much. I mean, it, it lasts 15 minutes most of the time. But there are decisions that, that you have to make. You have to choose, you know, which characters you're going to use, when you're going to spend your treasure tokens, um, because they're fairly rare, whether you're actually going to open chests and spend the dice to do so, or whether you're just going to be happy that you didn't run into any monsters. There's a good amount of kind of resource management that happens, um, and it's still a really interesting and engaging game. Uh, now, the one place where that doesn't really happen, and it is unfortunate, uh, is in the decision to either continue the delve or retire. Oftentimes you'll find that when you get to the regroup phase, you've got like one die left, and the choice to continue is generally a really obvious one. So it is one place where the decision making just feels like it doesn't really happen. So another place where dungeon roll might be a little bit weak is when you are playing with sort of the maximum number of players. It can start to feel like it's dragging a bit. Uh, during any one person's turn, there's really only two people who are really interacting, working with the dice, and so those other couple of people can sort of sit around and, and have to wait quite a while for their turn to come up, and that's too bad. Uh, also, there's a little bit of a, an interesting component problem, I think, with the box. Uh, the box that the whole game comes in, you actually use during the course of the game as well, and it's really flimsy. It's sort of paper, cardboard, and you have to open it and close it a lot to get the treasure out, and I keep feeling like it's all going to rip apart and break. So I think some better choices could have been made there for components. That being said though, the components in the rest of the game are really nice. Uh, we've got some good art going on on the cards, really interesting on both sides. The dice are nice, the color choices are really good, uh, so it's definitely winning on the component side there. Also, for me, I like this game as well, and where it really wins is the theme. Uh, it is a push your luck dice game, and I can get bored of those too, but this one adds something extra with the characters, it's got like flavor text for all the characters, each one has different special abilities, um, that dungeon crawl feel is really integrated with the game, and that adds a huge amount, to the point where this game is a push your luck dice game which I am going to keep and play over and over again, whereas zombie dice and, and that kind of stuff, you know, I bring it out once in a while, but it's not a game that I really bring out on gaming nights, and I think this one will be. I'm the Dungeon Lord. I am. It's me.